All right, let's get to Friday feedback on Friday this week, the way it's actually supposed to be. You can email info at davidpackman.com to comment on the show. Anything goes, something you want me to talk about, disagree with me about, agree with, whatever. Every once in a while, we get some kind of horrible trolling type message or an attack message. You have to see this one. This is like a, a wall of text from Albert. And here is what Albert says. I hate that I have to actually email you to be able to call you on your BS. Just trust me. I would love to done this on you YouTube channel. But unlike you, my job ain't to smear other people into the ground. I just have one question. How much do you pay for your subscribers? Because you won't let nobody debate them on what CNN and NBC tell him. So why not let the Republicans, the conservatives or us Americans actually exercise our freedom of speech? Or are you going to start saying that needs to be censored? Because so far I've heard you say Trump wants to get rid of the school system. No, he wants to get take it out of the federal government's hands. He did the same thing with abortion to get it out of the federal government's hands and put it where it belongs with the people. So how is this wrong? I mean, I can't even make it clear sentence without word vomit. And then when did she do a debate against him? It was a three on one, which actually wasn't fair to be like me, a Republican and a conservative all ganging up on you. That was all one sentence. So just like I told you in your videos, it's time to put your money where your mouth is. You got four years prepared to run for president, my man. And if you don't, don't judge. And the saddest part at all is you're probably never going to ever read this because of one of your flunkies is just going to delete it because you don't want to know that there is an opposition out there, whether it's American, Republican or conservative, because the only two y'all represent are the liberals and the Democrats. And before you say anything, as if I was about to say anything before you say anything, I plan on running for office in four years, but not to destroy like you want to build back better like it should be. So first and foremost, I'm not going to run for president because I legally cannot be president. I'm, I'm from Argentina originally legal citizen coming in the front door um, and I cannot be president based on current law. Secondly, uh, I don't pay for subscribers. The subscribers, some of them pay me if they like the show sort of seems a little bit confused. And I think my favorite part is that Albert seems to recognize he can't even put these thoughts coherently on text and it ends up being word vomit. He says, I can't even make it clear sentence without word vomit unless he's talking about someone else. In any case, I'm glad that he's recognizing that this is completely and totally incoherent. OK, uh, Steve Rowe says never take financial advice from a broke guy. Dave has no financial education at all. Trump is a billionaire. You decide who's blowing smoke up your ass. Trump's tariffs are so bad. Biden kept them in place. Let that sink in. Well, that's not true. But, you know, there's I think there is something here to talk about. Never take financial advice from a broke guy. I have no financial education. Well, I do have an MBA in financial planning. <laughs> Other than that, I have absolute absolutely no education in this stuff whatsoever. Uh, and listen, Trump has more money than me. That's true. That's absolutely true. But I'm not broke. And the difference is the money my parents gave me sitting in the S&P 500 would not actually give me what it is. Trump was given Trump's money, as we learned that last week was squandered through his business activities. If Trump had simply put the money he was given by his parents into an index fund, he would have even more money than he has right now. In other words, Trump has damaged his financial standing through his businesses. Whereas I I mean, listen, it's not about d patting myself on the back. I built this business from zero with no loans, gifts or whatever of a million dollars, as Trump says, or any amount. So listen, you take advice from whoever you want to. You decide also whether what a billionaire does with their money is what's most relevant to you. Uh, OK, we did a poll on the David Pakman show website. The question was, do you believe Trump when he says he won't run in 2028 if he loses over one hundred and ten thousand of you voted? Thirty nine percent of you believe Trump won't run again if he loses in November. Whereas 61 percent of you, a majority, believe Trump will run again if he loses on this one. I disagree 
with the majority of my audience. I believe Donald Trump will not run again if he loses. And in fact, we're going to talk about this in different scenarios. I believe if Trump loses in November within 24 hours, you will see Republicans start to distance from Trump and it will be effectively the end of MAGA as we know it. Many comments came in about Mark Robinson, the North Carolina gubernatorial candidates, disgusting comments about I'd like slavery to come back and I would like to own some slaves and all these other things. Space Force commander asks, does Robinson know that if slavery comes back, he's not going to be the one owning them? Well, I don't know what a number of you stumbled across this question. I don't know what Robinson knows or believes about what it would be like if slavery came back. Monk says it's insane that people see Trump as strong when he's so mentally fragile and insecure. Yeah, um, you know, bullies in many senses want to be seen as strong, but they're really representing their insecurities when Trump mimics or makes fun of how other people look. Trump's certainly insecure about how he looks. I mean, he's obese and he looks terrible. Uh, he wouldn't paint his face orange and do four hair transplants and all of it if he was happy with the way he looked. When Trump talks about how other people are mentally whatever that he's now talking about Kamala Harris, etc. On some level, Trump is probably concerned about the fact that he's constantly losing his train of thought and doesn't know what's going on at a bunch of these rallies. And it's a very common thing that those who bully others are themselves fragile and insecure. And Trump seems very much to fit that description to a T. Uh, also getting a lot of messages about Trump constitutionally, sort of like from a personality standpoint, Asparagus 114 wrote in and said we shouldn't have someone who gets triggered this easily in charge of a nuclear arsenal. That is very well said. One of the revelations of the debate against Kamala Harris was not really that doesn't tr that Trump doesn't know anything about policy. We knew that we actually we we've known that for a very long time. Right. When years ago he calls uh, Michael Flynn in the middle of the night and says, Michael, is a strong dollar or a weak dollar good for me? and good for the United States. Right. We've known for a long time he doesn't know anything about policy. But what was remarkable and scary about the debate against Kamala Harris is that with a couple of planned lines, she had a plan at some point mentioned that the, the rally attendees are bored with Trump and they leave the rally early. She knew it would trigger him and it did. He took the bait. He can't control it. And if he is this triggered by Kamala Harris saying people are bored with your rallies, he cannot in any kind of respectable or trustworthy way uh, participate in the decisions that presidents need to participate in. It's a major, major risk. All right. We did another poll on the YouTube channel, which is more important. Who's ahead in the national polls or who's ahead in the swing state polls? One hundred and eight thousand of you voted. <laughs> Ninety four percent of you say that the leader of the swing state polls is really what matters. And I agree with you to a degree. The caveat would be caveat would be if the if the national popular vote lead gets so big, it becomes almost a statistical impossibility uh, to lose the Electoral College. That being said, it's got to be pretty big. And Kamala Harris certainly isn't there right now. Uh, from uh, Reddit, Solarian says, worst case scenario, Trump wins the presidency. What do we do? He's already said he wants to jail those critical of him. Right now, this mostly extends to news organizations and late night show hosts like Jimmy Kimmel. But I'm sure David will be on the list. He's also going to persecute LGBTQ plus folks like myself. He's going to deport tons of people as well. If he wins in November, is it time to pack up and go to another country? I understand we need to vote and I'm going to do my part, but I feel we need a contingency plan, perhaps move to Norway or Australia. Well, what you have to remember is that moving to Norway or Australia is pretty difficult. You can't just up and move there. And so, as I've said before, 
it's both unrealistic for most people on a financial and personal level. Your family, your lives are in the United States. And from an immigration standpoint, it would be very difficult to move. What I've been saying to people is if it gets to the point where Trump wins and what's happening in your state is disgusting and you have to get out, consider a blue state. You don't have to um, go through any kind of immigration process. And yes, the blue states on average are a little more expensive because the quality of life is much higher. Consider that. And I think on the one hand, we want to stay and try to turn these red states blue as as a collective. We want to stay and turn the red states blue as an individual. The caller I got months ago who said, David, I live in Georgia. Um, my kid is trans. What's happening at school is horrible. I just what do I do? I'm going to vote. I'm going to vote, but I don't know. Well, maybe you go to Connecticut. Maybe you go to Massachusetts. Maybe you go to Rhode Island or Vermont or California. You go somewhere where they aren't dealing with this insanity uh, that Georgia is dealing with. And I can't fault people for making those decisions for themselves. That's for sure. Easier, not easy for everybody, but easier than moving to Australia, for example. Also from the subreddit, exact truck says, I really wish George W. Bush would publicly endorse Kamala. He really fucked up. He's responsible for millions of casualties and chaos continuing to this day. America has not held him accountable in the least. His moves were Ill, Ill considered and ill advised. And I feel like he has regrets trying to act like a grown up in a job he was fully unqualified for. Partisan politics are eating us alive. A step towards the other side would show some integrity, bring some redemption and be seen by history with admiration. You already know the family hates Trump. If Cheney can do it, so can he or am I just delusional? So let me give you my personal take first. I would like to see George W. Bush endorse Kamala Harris. Um, on a on a personal level for all of the horrible things that Bush has done, I would like to see him step in and say, let's make the right choice. I also am aware that a lot of leftists or self-proclaimed leftists, if George W. Bush endorses Kamala, they would go, I told you so Kamala's right wing Cheney endorsed her Bush endorsed her blah, 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 right on and on and on. And of course, it's not the case in the sense that Bush and Cheney disagree with Kamala Harris on almost all policy. It's that if Bush did it and Cheney has done it, they see the reinforcement of the guardrails of our democracy as more important than what should the top tax rate be, which they can get back to fighting us about in 2029 if they get a winner in 2028. So I would like to see Bush do it, but don't think for a second that they won't go after him brutally and say Bush's endorsement is proof that Kamala is a right winger, uh, even though it's not true. We've got a great bonus show for you today. Sign up at joinpacman.com. Pre-order my forthcoming book, The Echo Machine, at davidpacman.com slash echo.